you stuck up, half-witted, scruffy-looking nerf herder? Hey everybody, Lord Tremendous here. Got another battle report here for you. This is a hundred point battle. Uh, it's the, my second X-Wing battle report. Uh, just a real casual game. No time limit, nothing. Just go until we're all dead. And uh, that, was, that was it. This was a battle for pride. This was a battle for victory. This is a battle between I, Lord Tremendous of the Scum, versus Sleeping Cthulhu of the Imperials. And let me tell you something. This was a brutal fight to the very end. It's actually a really good game. You're going to enjoy it. All wings report in. Here's what I brought. I have the Boba. Boba Fett. Uh, he's in his fire spray, obviously. I've got Greedo, and what Greedo allows me to do is uh, the first damage card that's issued out uh, is, is turned face up, and that includes the first damage card that's done to Boba. So, yeah, that can be really bad, but it can also be incredibly good. And Boba's got four shields, so it's a little while before he starts having to flip the card. And then he's got elusiveness, which is long as uh for what is it uh when defending i can receive a stress token and force my opponent to reroll one of his attack dice so that's that's never actually helped me out but for two points i think it's worth keeping around then i've got thug life uh my syndicate thug on a y wing and i gave him a blaster turret and his job was really uh, the blaster turret really just lets you shoot in any direction as long as you're in range band one or two you have to give up a focus in order to do it but i i think that's a really really valuable tool to have on this thing especially considering it has basically eight wounds so yeah this can get in close take a bunch of damage and then dish out three shots at range man one or, two, or at range man two four i think it's four at range man one i'm not exactly sure if you get an extra or not but still really cool then I have another uh, Syndicate Thug uh, in a Y-Wing, obviously, with uh, Ion Torpedoes as the upgrade, just because I like the Ion Torpedoes, and I like using the Y-Wing, so that's what I did. And then last but not least, I have my Black Sun Soldier in a Z-95 Headhunter. Uh, he's butt naked because I had 13 points left after my three main ships, and he was the one I fit in, so happy. The force is strong in this one. Behold my opponent and his Imperial Admiral Rebel Alliance recruiter. Don't ask. The guy plays both sides of the line. That way he's never on the losing side. But my opponent, the smug man that he is, prepares his Imperial fleet for the Boba. Here are the Imperial Guard ships, the scumbags that they are. Uh, the Imperial One is a Royal Guard pilot in a TIE interceptor. As you can see, he's got Royal Guard TIE. He's got auto thrusters, a targeting computer, push the limit. This guy is fully kitted out to kick ass and take names. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> I need to kill this guy quick. Next up, he's got Captain uh, Kagi, Caddy, Kagi, whatever, Cabby, in the uh, Lambda class shuttle. It's a big Imperial bus. Uh, the cool thing about this is uh, when an enemy ship uh, shoots at you or acquires, a, or whenever it shoots at him, I think it gets, uh, what's it called? Stress. Yeah, he's got the Rebel Captive upgrade. Uh, once once per round, uh, the first ship that fires at, at you and uh, declares that you as the target, he receives a stress token because there's a captive in there and it's like, ah, I'm going to have to kill my friend in order to take out this ship. It's also got engine upgrades and enhanced scopes. So this thing is also a bit nerve-wracking. It's got 10 hit points if you include the shields and everything like that. It's easy to hit, but it's, oof, it's all gotta, it takes a lot of damage. And then his third ship is uh, Sunterfell. This guy is a mind eraser. He's got auto thrusters, push the limit, targeting computer, royal guard tie. This thing is really, really dangerous, really difficult to deal with. And uh, yeah, you'll, you'll see what happens. I have a very bad feeling about this. Here's the setup, and uh, as you can see, it was uh, more or less a uh, like divide and conquer situation. Boba's over on the left side, uh, and the hope there is that my opponent would go after Boba with his ships, leaving his flanks exposed so that my two Y-Wings and my uh, Z-95 could zoom around and uh, take him out, or divide his forces, because Boba can take a lot of damage. He's got a lot of real cool abilities on him with Elusive, and just his core ability where if there's anything in range band one, 
Uh, for every enemy ship within range band one, he gets to reroll uh, an, uh, a defensive or attacking dice, so it's really cool. Uh, so I'm thinking that Bob is going to be all right because he's just going to get in there as quick as he can and start shooting, you know, leaving the Y wings and the Z95 to finish off as much as he can. Uh, the asteroids are pretty tightly compact in the center there, so I was going to use my smaller ships. Uh, maneuverability to my advantage and I really wanted to take out the Lambda and his uh, Imperial Guard. Actually, I, you know, I wanted to take them all out, but the Lambda was one of the first things I wanted to take out just because of its ability to soak up damage. It's a real pain in the ass, but that's what setup looked like and it, I, I was pretty happy with the way I uh, deployed. Here's what turn one looks like after we're done with movement. Uh, nothing happened with shooting or anything like that because we just weren't in range. Uh, but as you can see, he's not taking the bait. He's kind of grouped up in the center. I think he was waiting to see where I was going to go. A uh, little risky maneuver, in my opinion, with him hanging out in the back behind the Lambda. But his Lambda's got that ability where he moves at uh, like pilot, sc pilot skill zero, but his, pilot, his actual pilot skill of eight is what he shoots at. So he moves first and usually shoots first. It's... Uh, uh, very, very uh, sinister, we will say, because he's Imperial scum. But uh, yeah, he's he's. Uh, it's a very sinister kit and uh, very smart. I was impressed with it. But yeah, my two Y wings move up. Uh, one starts cutting over towards Boba. The Z95 just moves up because I want him to circle around with his maneuverability and do a bunch of damage to any of those ships at this point. And Boba fires forward. As you can see, I put an evade token on him just in case. So. <laughs> I I was a little nervous. Here's what turn two looks like after movement. As you can see, we, we didn't waste any time. It just becomes a huge dogfight. Uh, Boba cautiously moves up to just kind of take aim at whatever he can and, and blow him away. I moved my Y-Wing forward in the middle there with the hope that the Imperial Lambda thing, or the, the big bus, would stop, would like run into him and be stuck there so I could shoot him and he couldn't shoot at me. It would have been really, really cool, but my opponent saw it coming and flew right past him. Uh, so neither of us were, were, you know, screwed in that way. My Z95, I think I missed, uh, mismoved him a little bit. I should have cut him harder to the left, but I didn't want him to run into my other Y-Wing. Uh, but I'm, I'm happy with the positioning because my Y-Wings and Boba are all in excellent position to attack. His bus isn't going to be able to attack. Uh, he does have some target locks on me, which is bad. But I figure if I lose one Y-Wing and I can do damage to Sunter or his uh, Royal Guard ship, I should be in really good shape this battle. So we start out and he starts shooting immediately at my Y-Wing and he shoots incredibly well with Sunta. Yeah, he peels all three of uh, my Y-Wing shields off in one burst. It was really, really bad. However, we counter Boba, not messing around, fires at the Royal Guard and is able to do two damage to him, one of which I think makes it so that he, this thing can't shoot. Like, it, it's, it's, the pilot is blinded, I believe, and so the Royal Guard has to lose his shots because the next time he shoots, he doesn't roll any dice. It's just one of those critical hits. It was the perfect crit card for him to flip over, but the only reason he had to flip it, because I didn't roll any crits, was because of Guido. Uh, and, and God, I love that card. <laughs> and then over here, uh, the Y-Wing taking full advantage of the fact that the Royal Guard is blinded and hurting, opens fire and blasts him all over the universe. Good shot, Red 2. Yeah, second round kill on something as important as that particular ship was a huge advantage in this one. I now outnumber him two to one. That is just absolutely outstanding. So we go over here to turn three, and here's what movement looks like. Boba moves up to start, because I wanted him to start going after the uh, the big bus thing, because he's got a lot of damage output. My Y-Wing uh, that, that took out the Royal Guard last turn does a, a K-turn, basically. He does a barrel roll type of thing, or a loop-to-loop, uh, -loop, where he fires forward and then turns around his facing so he can get a better angle of stuff. It does cause him to stress out, so he can't take an action, but he can still shoot, and I can get rid of the stress next turn with a very simple green maneuver. Uh, the other Y-Wing moves up because I didn't know where his uh, other uh, little little TIE fighter was going to go. And my Z-95 starts making his way around the asteroid so he can eventually turn around and get back into this fight. 
Uh, his lambda, I don't think it moves at all. I think it just stays perfectly still. I think he was hoping I was going to shoot past him or something. But no, I'm willing to take Boba through the asteroids in order to try to blow this thing up. Felt pretty good about that. And his TIE fighter runs into Boba, so he can't shoot at anything this turn. Really worked out nice for me. So we get into combat, or we go into shooting, and Boba has the first shot because the Lambda's got nothing, and the TIE Fighter's got nothing, and I just open him up, peeling four shields off of him. I mean, excellent rolls, I'm fully aware of that. Uh, I didn't even have to use my focus, I was just able to re-roll uh, one of the dice because I had two enemies within uh, range band one. I got four dice instead of three because I was in range band one. I opened this bus up huge, and uh, it was very exciting, I'm not going to lie to you. Then over here, my uh, Y-Wing, that one that took out the Royal Guard, has a real thing for taking out TIE Fighters and puts two wounds on Sunter Fell, leaving him with only one left. So, yeah, it's, it's shaping up to be a real short game at this rate, but uh, he's doing incredibly well. Thug life, what can I tell you? Then over here, uh, this is turn four after movement. Here's what everything looks like. Uh, the Lambda just gets the hell out of Dodge. I misguess, I guess, where he's going to end up, and I move Boba in the wrong direction. Uh, his, what's it called, uh, TIE Fighter just barely avoids running into Boba where he's at, and uh, it has him just basically wide open there. And my Y-Wings and my Z-95 start moving around, uh, trying to get back in this fight, get better angles and, and uh, you know, line of sight so I can start pouring some more laser fire into these guys. In shooting, uh, his TIE Fighter, Sunter, uh, just opens up and takes uh, two of Boba's shields out, dropping him down to 50%, which is uh, not great, not great, but he's still well in this fight. And with nothing else going on, we go over here to turn five after movement, and Boba and the uh, the, the big Lambda or whatever, they, they bump into each other. Actually, the Lambda bumps into Boba, which uh, upset, or I'm sorry, I bump into the Lambda, and, which is a little upsetting. I wanted to be able to shoot him. Uh, he does some great maneuvers because he's got all these different abilities to shift around Sunter there and makes it so that uh, he, he Boba he can shoot at Boba all day, but Boba's got no angle at him. And my Y-Wing in the middle there does just barely have a shot at his uh, Imperial TIE Fighter there. So I, at least I get some shots this turn, but it's not nearly as many as I need. As you can see, though, my other Y-Wing and my Z-95 are making their way back into this fight. His TIE Fighter targets uh, Boba and takes off another shield, which is, uh, it should have been a lot better. Uh, I was able, I was lucky, as you can see, I was evading, and uh, my opponent didn't roll all that great, so that was kind of nice. And then with nothing else going on, because I'm not able to hurt the TIE Fighter at all, we go into turn six. And finally, uh, things are starting to go well. I've got the Lambda in three arcs. Uh, my Z-95 has a shot at him. My Y-Wing has a shot at him. And now Boba, who can shoot behind him, has a shot at the Lambda. So I'm hoping to take the bus out this turn. Uh, nothing I can do about Sunter, but he's sitting on one wound. I'm not overly concerned about him, you know? So we go into shooting, and the first thing that happens is the Lambda goes and put and peels the shields off of my Z-95. Stabilize your rear deflectors. Watch for enemy fighters. Not great, but at least he's not doing any hull damage yet. And then uh, Boba opens up on the Lambda. <laughs> Peeling off his last shield and doing two points of, or two critical damage to him. The first one was just regular damage, and you got to flip it because of Guido, which damaged his cockpit, which I believe makes it so that he is now a zero pilot, a zero skill pilot. So now he moves first, but he shoots dead last. And the other one was munitions failure, and I think that makes it so that he can't shoot or he he shoots with one less dice. I don't remember exactly what it does, but two really good cards. Anytime you flip a card over, you know, on your opponent, it's great. Uh, he does take some stress. Boba does take some stress for shooting at the thing, but this thing is hanging on by a thread. I think it's got like three hit points left, and that's great considering uh, it's got ten to begin with. And yeah, there's a better shot at what the actual things did: damage, cockpit, and munitions failure. Uh, then uh, Thug Life uh, takes some pot shots at the Lambda and is able to slip another wound through, uh, dropping him down to only two hit points left, which is outstanding. 
And then with nothing else going on, we go over here to turn seven after movement. And as you can see, the aerial acrobatics continue. Uh, the Z95 only moved forward a little bit, so he's got a shot at the Lambda. Uh, my Y-Wing, I, I turned him way, way wrong. I figured his TIE Fighter was going somewhere else, and I was wrong. Uh, I shouldn't say I was wrong. I actually had him, but with all the maneuvers that he can do with uh, Sunter and everything like that, he was able to barrel roll out of my line of sight. So my opponent's doing some really good maneuvers with... Uh, uh, his TIE Fighter, which is good because he's only got one hit point left. <laughs> so, uh, But all in all, I've got a shot at his Lambda. I could possibly take it out. Boba and my other Y-Wing are looping around to get shots out of him next turn. So Sunta opens up on my other Y-Wing here, my other Thug uh, Fighter. And peels off every single shield he had. Sunter is uh, is a hell of a shot, but yeah, I'm not able to evade anything. It was not good, and three of my shields come right off. So this guy is heavily exposed now. Still has five wounds, so he's not going anywhere right away. But yeah, he's definitely circling the drain. And then over here, my Z95 fires at the Lambda, and this trooper, he's able to uh, take another wound off of the Lambda. It's got one wound left. I wasn't able to roll that second wound or get it through. I think he evaded one, which was unfortunate. But the Z95 is uh, definitely making his mark on the uh, in, in the fleet, which I'm so proud of. I'm so very, very proud. But then over here, the Lambda fires back and puts the Z-95 into the universe the bad way. It's a trap! Which is sad. I, I was really enjoying the Z-95, his maneuverability, and his, you know, just, he wasn't doing a ton. He was a 13-point ship. He was just supposed to, you know, even out my, even, uh, bring me up to 100 points even. But, uh, yeah, he was doing good. He even put some damage out there. But, yeah, he soaked up these shots, which is good. And it's just a shame that he died. Oh, well. Quick apology. Uh, due to all the flak and, and laser flashes and stuff, I was blinded uh, by stupidity. And I forgot to take a picture of turn 8 after movement. I apologize. However, I did not forget to take a picture of Thug Life taking out the Lambda. I felt a great disturbance in the force, as if millions of voices suddenly cried out in terror and were suddenly silenced. Yeah, it was a lucky as hell shot too. Only one hit got through and he failed to evade it. <laughs> so, Thug Life is definitely doing his work though. He's taken out the uh, Royal Guard uh, TIE Fighter. He's helped finish off the Lambda, got the kill shot on it, and uh, did a decent amount of damage, or was going to do a decent amount of damage, uh, hopefully, to the final TIE Fighter. So, Thug Life is definitely going to have to stick around in my, in my fleets from now on. Love the Y-Wings. So here's turn nine after movement, and I now outnumber uh, the TIE Fighter three to one, which is uh, pretty nice. Though unfortunately, the crazy bastard has the maneuverability to evade me quite easily. So in this situation, as you can see, my opponent decided that discretion was a better form of valor. I do have a shot with him with my Y-Wing, but I miss, and the other ones don't have anything. The other Y-Wing on the top of the picture here has nothing, and Boba just doesn't have him whatsoever. So we go over here to turn 10 after movement, and again, I just can't get an angle on him. Uh, he's able to maneuver out of my Y-Wing's uh, arc of uh, fire, just barely, but he's able to do it. And uh, the, uh, the other Y-Wing and Boba, I just don't know where he's going. So in this situation, where, where I'm all here, where, where I'm all set up here, I see where his TIE Fighter is. I have an idea where he's gonna go. And since I move before he does, I, I, my plan here was to move my Y-Wing up as close as I could to the asteroid, and I was guessing where the ast where he was going to end up landing. And, and if the uh, TIE Fighter runs into my Y-Wing, he can't do any actions. He can't, you know, maneuver or anything like that. And I was only going to get one shot at it, so my plan was to maneuver Boba around real sharp to get the shot off at him and uh, position a y my other Y-Wing in the same thing because he's got a target lock on him and he's got four ion you know, shots at him. So if I could just get this shot, I should be able to slip one more wound through, kill this guy, and win the game. That's my hope anyway. So we go into shooting here and Sunter fires away at my Y-Wing and does two points of damage to him, which hurt a lot. I do fire back with this guy because I've got the uh, the blaster turrets and the focus but I'm not able to hurt him. He evades every single shot which was as impressive as it was disappointing. <laughs> 
But right here, as you can see, the best laid plans, it works out. Uh, I'm not able to angle Boba in such a way that he's able to get uh, his shots off on the TIE Fighter, but I do make it so that he runs into my Y-Wing, giving my other Y-Wing the opportunity to unload his four ion torpedoes into uh, the TIE Fighter, which is excellent. And then right here, the Y-Wing does exactly that, firing all four ion uh, torpedoes right into his tailpipe. Good shot, Red 2. With Sunter's defeat, there it is. There's the end of the game. As you can see, Boba, Thug Life, and my Y-Wing all still survives. The Z-95 is dead, but hey, we're scums and villains. We don't care. We'll get another guy with no future. We, we have no problem with that at all. But yes, I was able to pull out another victory thanks to incredibly lucky dice rolls and uh, one good tactic that actually worked. It was, uh, it was refreshing to have a plan that actually bore fruit. <laughs> But absolutely outstanding game, and we will get to the recap in a minute, because right now, this game is over. Everything is proceeding as I have foreseen. <laughs> Hey guys and gals, uh, all you Wargamer nuts. Right here we've got an ad for Token Gal. Uh, she makes tokens for every game system, every possible requirement, every need. Uh, if, if it's a war game, if it's a tabletop game, if it's a board game, if it's if it's a card game if you need tokens wound counters spell counters uh afflictions hexes augments uh anything at all anything at all send her an email tell her what you need hell if you want certain pictures put on there tell her what pictures you're looking for not only will she find it and make it but she will charge you you know really really fair prices and i mean really fair don't take my word for it though send her an email tell her what you need get yourself some tokens you're not going to regret it and tell her tremendous sent you the emperor does not share your optimistic appraisal of the situation you have failed me for the last time, Admiral. Good. I can feel your anger. I am defenseless. Take your weapon. Strike me down with all of your hatred, and your journey towards the dark side will be complete. Yeah, as you can see, there is uh, no redemption for failure in uh, in the Imperial Arms. And unfortunately, that young man, that young Admiral, after being force choked to death by Darth Cthulhu, uh, he, he, we, we, we buried him out back in a very shallow grave with a very brief ceremony. It's sad. No, stop. Don't call the police. It's a joke. The kid is fine. God, it's all it's sarcasm, people. It's sarcasm. <laughs> But in the end, it was a victory for Lord Tremendous. I shot down all the Imperial dogs. I did end up losing my Black Sun soldier, the Z-95 headhunter. May he rest in pieces. And uh, Darth Cthulhu lost the Interceptor, Captain Caggy or Cadby or Caddy or whatever he was. And Sunter fell. They are now dead and no one can ever use them again in the game. Uh, killing off the Royal Guard pilot first thing was a huge advantage. Having his ships outnumbered two to one was massive, and I got really lucky with those rolls. That guy had a lot of evasion, and I just he, he they all rolled blanks, and I just got the three wounds through. That's the thing about the Tie Fighters; they're really expensive, but they're just exposed. There's no shields; they don't have a whole lot of hull points. They do a lot of damage, but they're glass cannons, and once you get a hold of them, it's it's like throttling an elf. They're really fast; they can put out a lot of damage but if you get a hold of them their spines snap like balsa wood and it's a it's a satisfying crunch i'm not gonna lie to you uh boba oh the boba he is a monster in combat two arcs of sight greedo the elusiveness he's really almost unstoppable it ought to be considered cheating how well i do with boba but uh you know he wasn't he did really well i love the boba but uh, Thug Life, man, that that uh, syndicate thug in the Y-Wing with the blaster turret. 
I mean, as long as he had focus on him, he was just able to just obliterate everything around him. Uh, Single-handedly, this guy won me the game. Finished off the Royal Guard, finished off the Lambda, did significant damage to the Lambda, and was able to be the speed bump required to hold Sunter in place long enough for my other Y-Wing to unload his torpedoes into him and blast him into oblivion. Really like the Y-Wing and expect to see at least one with that kit uh, in every one of my fleets. In fact, I expect my opponents to shoot this thing down first thing in the rest of my games. Poor little Z-95 pilot died before his time. Poor bastard. Doesn't get to go to the victory party. Uh, but speaking of powerhouses, Sunterfell really is. The little guy almost took me out. I mean, to be perfectly honest, had he not ran into my Y-Wing... It would have just been luck to get him into one of my firing arcs and then actually getting the shot through. The guy was unbelievably difficult to, to lock down. And, I mean, he he was he was hurting my Y-Wing. The, the, one, the Thug Life Y-Wing only had three points left, which he could have done easily, especially in range band one. Uh, the other Y-Wing had no shields left that Sunter had taken off of him. And Boba was hurting pretty bad. I think he was out of shields, too. Well, he might have had one shield left. But still, I mean, Sunter had every opportunity or every, I guess, po probability that he could have actually single-handedly beat me in this game. He could have turned it around had I not got lucky with that maneuver and, uh, you know, lazily listed to the left and, and stopped him from doing any actions and was, you know, in perfect position to take him out with ion torpedoes. But, uh, yeah, guys, this is a really fantastic game. I highly advise you get into it. If you like Star Wars, if you like space battles, if you just like ships, I mean, give the game a shot. It's totally worth it. This was an excellent game. This was an excellent opponent. I really love playing in the Star Wars universe, and I'm looking forward to the rematch. And my opponent completed his set of tremendous dice. He got a green one earlier in an old game that we played, and he finally lost the game to me, giving him the coveted red dice of defeat. <laughs> But yeah, guys, that's going to do it for this battle report, number two of X-Wing. As always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or complaints, feel free to put them in the comment section below, and I will get back to you as quickly as I can. But yeah, guys, thanks! <laughs>